Just going to do a quick run through the GUI software. Uh, if you've bought a Paris board from Multi-Week Hopter, you would have elected what software uh, would have been on the board. Or if you've bought a kit, the board should come um, preloaded with the correct software um, version for the airframe you're building, in this case quad. So uh, the calibration, both the mag and the accelerometer calibrations would have been done for you as part of the testing on the bench at multi-week hopter before the card shipped. So we don't have to worry about all of that sort of stuff. Uh, PIDs will be preset, etc. What we need to do is teach our radio, our transmitter, um, to talk to the Paris board. So normally I do this on the bench before I even bolt any of the other bits together. I certainly put the card inside the airframe. I take the card out, I connect it to the receiver as per the wiring diagram and connect it up to the computer like so and I set the radio up. Now we're in a new model, it's a normal aircraft uh, as in an acrobatic plane um, and uh, we're going to assign some auxiliary switches to, to, the, to two channels uh, but we'll get to that later. I assume you know how to do all of that with your particular radio. So the first thing I need to do is select the serial port that the um, USB is connected to and we just wait a second for the LEDs on the Paris board to stop flashing and then we connect, click start and we've got all the parameters coming back from the Paris board to the GUI. So this is all completely live data so if I pick up the quad and start moving it around. We can see over here the image of the quad moving. We can see what roll angle, what pitch angle we're getting. We can see which way the compass thinks we're pointing, the mag, the mag sensor. And over here we can graphically see all the things we're doing. And we can see what the accelerometer is sensing, the gyro is sensing, the mag is sensing and our altitude and heading according to barometer. We've got no GPS data at the moment because we don't have a GPS on this board. If you bought a GPS version that needs to be connected or you will start to get errors showing up here and incorrect data. So if you bought it with a GPS you have to have that connected while you're doing all of this. Okay, debugs all showing zero. Errors are showing zero, that's all good, fine and wonderful. So everything's connected and we're talking okay as far as the board is concerned. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this right hand side here, which are the parameters, which is basically what the transmitter is sending at the moment. And what we need to do, firstly, is grab our radio and make sure that these channels all move in the correct direction. So first of all, I'm going to go low throttle to high throttle, that's going the right way. I'm going to go over to pitch, which in helicopter terms is elevator, or in aircraft terms. Uh, so I'm going to push the elevator stick forward and pull it back, and they're going in the right direction. The next thing I'm going to look at is at the roll, or the aileron control, and I'm going to go right aileron, left aileron, and they're moving in the right directions. Okay. And then I'm going to look at your and I'm going to go right yaw and left yaw and they're moving in the right directions. Uh, the other thing you should also look at is aux1 and aux2 which are the switches you should have set up uh, but we'll come back to those later but I'm just going to quickly flick those two switches and watch that they actually do move in the direction that I think they should move in. Alright, so directions are correct. The next thing we have to do is set midpoints. Now there are three magic numbers you have to remember when you're dealing with this particular setup in multi-way. The first one is 1500. 1500 is the center point. So what you want to do is adjust your sub trim on each channel, pitch, roll, and yaw. I don't bother on throttle with center point because it's not really that critical. But you want to adjust your sub trim to get as close as you possibly can to 1500 at the center of those three sticks. Okay, they're all very close. Next thing you want to do is set the high point. So we're going from 1500, the high point is 1905. 
So we can see there I've gone from 1906, 1904, 1906, that's near 1905. Lovely. Okay, then we want to set the low point at 1095. And keep playing with the end point until the pitch becomes as close as I can get to 1095, 1096 is okay. Alright. So okay, to, you you can be one or two points out. It's not going to make much difference on the endpoints, right? But what you need to do is make sure you're not too low with the endpoints. Ten nine five is the bottom point. You don't want to be above eleven hundred, or you're going to have problems with stick commands when you do set up stuff later. All right, at nineteen oh five is the high point. You don't want to be below nine be below nineteen hundred. Right, so I'm going to go through and double check that for your and roll as well. And you can see the roll is not quite right, so we're just going to adjust that a little and get that nice and close to 10.95. Okay, all right, so. And of course, last but not least, I'm going to make sure that my throttle is well below 1095 and well below 1905, or just above and beyond in the two extremes. All right? You need to particularly make sure that throttle is done before you set up the ESC endpoints, which we did in the prior step to this. All right? So that's the bit in particular you needed to do in this GUI before you did that setup on the ESC that I just covered. All right, so there we go, that's that. Next thing you wanna do is set up your aux switches. Okay, so um, I'm wiring in as a discrete receiver into this, so I've only got auxiliary one and auxiliary two available to me. If you wanna run auxiliary three and auxiliary four, you have to use a summed input and a receiver that can reduce a summed input. Okay, so I'm going to make sure my switches are set. Now, I, in this case, I've set a three-way switch for aux one. So I've got a low point, same sort of reading as same num three magic numbers, a mid and a high point on aux one, and aux two. I've only got on a two-way switch, so I'll only have a low and a high point. I won't have a midpoint on aux two. I will never have a midpoint on aux two because it's a two-way switch. All right. If you're running aux three and four, you set those up as well. Okay, having now got those switches switching properly, what I can do is I can come over here to this matrix. Right? What this matrix lets us do is select what those switches actually do. Now, in the case of this little quad, I'm actually not using aux two. I don't have GPS on it. I just want some basic functions. So I'm not actually going to set up the switch matrix on aux two at all. But I could if I wanted to. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just set up what is if I was a helicopter my flight mode switch with three different modes. Basic mode is going to be my general fly around mode. I always myself fly around with the accelerator uh, the accelerometer on. Uh, that's in level mode. Uh, so for all three switch positions, I have the little square highlighted. So that means that no matter what switch position on aux one, that's going to work. Okay. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is the barometer, which is altitude hold. And I'm going to have that flick on for the midpoint and the high point of the switch. And so basically I'm flying around, I want to just fly around and hold altitude a bit. I flip to the middle position and you can see the green highlight here shows that that is selected. And finally if I switch to the third position, the mag sensor is also going to become active. And that just adds an extra, if you like, strength to the heading hold of the aircraft. So it should stay pointed where I've left it pointed, I can adjust it still with the yaw control, but it should pretty much hold heading very firmly once I'm in mag mode. So basically that's what my switches do. I mean, 
level mode, I add barometer, and I add mag. If I didn't want to, for instance, run barometer in the high mode, I can just click in the top left corner of that square, and now that option won't be available in that switch position. All right, likewise, I can switch, click in the top left hand corner of that square and have that option come back on. Now, none of this will take effect until I come down here and click on write. And that actually stores this data onto the Paris board. Any changes I make in any of these parameters won't exist on the board until I click right. In fact, I can take that off, not click right, but click read again, and that's come back on all by itself because I didn't turn it off. If I turned it off, click right, then click read, we can see now that there is no mag coming back on. But if I click it back on, hit right, hit read, we get that back. Um, these are the PIDs. I'm not going to go through setting those for the moment, but just uh, these are the parameters which affect how the actual aircraft flies. For the moment, stick to the default, but if you do need to change them, all you do is you click on them and slide left or right to change the number. Again, that number, having been changed, isn't actually changed until you click on right. Okay, and then read to get back to where you were to confirm that you're back and got the number you want. Okay, you have a reset button down here that will set default parameters in the flight board. Unless you're really stuck, I wouldn't actually ever use it. Calibrate accelerometer and calibrate mag. I'm not going to go through at this point in time because your board would have had those already done. If you load new code, you need to do or you change. A lot of the parameters within it, you should redo your accelerometer and mag calibrations again. Um, there's a lot of information on the multi -week Copter website on how to do those. Okay, up the top here, you have an option now to save those parameters. So, having set all this up, you can just save that as a file, which later you can load using the load button. But I don't need to do those, they're there as options. Um, and basically that's all set the way I wanted to, do, to want it to be. So now I can just close that software or close comms and disconnect from the board and that will all be right to go. Uh, don't forget you need to do the throttle settings before you teach the ESC the endpoints of your throttle channel.